it's spinning in both directions. One way it's spinning easier than the other, but that clutch is definitely, absolutely, completely knackered. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen a lot of photos and videos of me out on my jet ski, and that's the bad boy right behind me. So my ski is a Yamaha FX Cruiser. It's the SHO version, which means it's the 1.8 litre four cylinder supercharged version. Somewhere around about 220 or 230 horsepower, but Yamaha I won't tell you exactly what it is. Anyway, it does about 115 k's an hour on the water and that's pretty good fun. Now last year I had a problem with it and I thought that the supercharger had gone because it was getting close to 200 hours and that's the supercharger there on the front. But it turned out the supercharger was actually fine. It was a spacer way down in the bowels of the jet ski. Real pain in the neck place to get to. It took me about six hours to change it out, but it was just a $79 upgrade. This little spacer here that basically joins the throttle body to the air intake from the intercooler just completely tore apart so I was losing a heap of boost out of there. I replaced it with a billet one and while I was in there I also removed something that restricts the airflow. It's supposed to do some kind of filtering, some mesh thing. Anyway, I got all that done and the ski has never run better. In fact, at one point this summer I actually got her up to 121 k's an hour with a fairly empty tank and me standing with my feet on the back and basically my uh, head down here somewhere. So that there was very little wind resistance but it gave me a really good summer and has been reasonably reliable and then it stopped again unfortunately it lost all of its power completely this time it's limited to 5000 rpms it only does about 60 k's an hour and i'm pretty sure that my supercharger clutch has gone that's what i thought had happened last year didn't turn out to be the case but now it's got 210 hours on it. It's well and truly overdue for a clutch to go. And I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So today we're gonna to pull it apart, rip off that supercharger, pull out the clutch and have a look what's going on in there. The problem with working on jet skis is that you are always leaning over something. You can't, you're kneeling on or leaning over. Nothing is easy on a jet ski. But the first thing we're gonna do is get rid of this decorative plastic cover. All right, now we can see the 1.8 litre in all its glory. The next thing is to get rid of the PCV breather. Sure, if that bit was supposed to come out, to be honest. No, that's fine. Fixed. All right, let's put that away. And then we're going to remove the intake off the front of the supercharger. Should just be a couple of hose clamps. There we go. Here's a quick test to see if our supercharger clutch is buggered or not. Okay, what we need to do is see if this spins in both directions. Spinning one way. Huh? Huh. Now see, I wanted to be able to spin that supercharger in both directions for dramatic YouTube effect. Um, I'm just reaching down here now. And the supercharger is spinning freely in one direction and it is actually locking up in the other direction, which is what it's supposed to do when the clutch is working fine. But you see, I pulled this air intake off when I was on the water and I was having problems and it spun freely in both directions and now it's actually locking back up. So I can spin it a little bit here and there, 
but I suspect that if I was to take this out on the water right now, I'd probably get a little bit of boost again and probably get, well, who knows, seconds, minutes, hours of use out of it before the clutch obviously heats up, I think, before the clutch would let go again and I would go back into this same issue of low power. When I've che checked it in the past, when I checked it last year, definitely didn't do that. So that that gives me actually a little bit of hope because one of the other things that can go wrong with these superchargers is that the supercharger shaft can actually let go. And um, the fact that it's now locking up means that there is still a connection with the shaft. So I would say that it probably is just the clutch, but there's only one way to find out, and that's to keep pulling this bad boy apart until we get it all out and we can have a look at it. All right, well, I've got that hose off, so now we're gonna get these ones off. And that ain't gonna work. Check out the weird marks in this, obviously from getting really hot. Wow. Now it's probably the right time to remove the lanyard so I don't accidentally start it. And also shove something down in the intercooler so that we don't drop anything down there. We don't need any day ruiners. going to get a little tricky in here. Would you believe it on a jet ski? No, surely not. I think we're going to have to remove the air box and then we're going to have to remove some bolts off this bracket here that hold the intercooler in. So that'll be fun. The unique thing about jet skis is that even a blind person can work on them because you don't actually need any vision as you can never actually look inside the hole while you're working on it. Everything's done by feel. I've had this ski for 200 hours and I've never ever taken the air cleaner out. They don't see a lot of dust on the ocean to be honest and actually looks reasonably clean. I don't even know how you get it out. Does it just push out? It looks like it's screwed in. Yeah. Well, that's giving us a whole bunch more room, isn't it? Ah, much better. So then, I guess, the next is to get that bit off. And then, I believe, we've got to take these all out of here. And with this bracket removed, supercharger should just lift out. Oh, let's see. Thank 
Nearly got that down the supercharger hole. All right. Woo, look at that, barely even sweaty. All right, well, that was a pain in the neck. Well, actually it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. So we've got 10, 10, 10, 12, 12, 12. Here it is in all its glory, HKS. And now we're spinning both ways, no problem. And hmm. spins nice and freely. Looks really nice and clean in there, actually. I think that looks pretty good. Can't see any damage to any of the blades or anything. Everything seems to be as it should be. It's not even that much blow by. I don't know. Yeah, it should have blow by because PCB does breathe into the intake. So um, it's pretty good. All right. Well, I think it's safe to say that the supercharger is fine. It looks good. Now in here, this is the clutch, I think, or the drive wheel. I'm not really sure on the particulars. And now I've got to take off this oil line. And this side will be a little bit fun to get to. Oh no, that's all right, because that's the PCV. So I'm gonna to have to get in here and get down here and remove, oh yeah, this little sneaky fella here as well. And then we've got to start pulling off all of these hex head bolts all the way around the front there. And apparently there's a sneaky one. Yeah somewhere apparently there's a sneaky one hidden in the middle somewhere so we're gonna have to have a look for that one too put a rag down there so that we've got something to catch any oil that's inevitably gonna drip, drip out maybe even two rags down here well we don't want to drop uh, anything down in there let's just cover that up too shall we Okay, so update. Um, 
<laughs> this, this is a pain in the neck. Um, all right, we have got the oil pump off. Um, I've cleaned off the gasket material, I think, reasonably well. Um, now we've got to remove this intermediate gear here. And apparently I just rocked that backwards and forwards like I was doing and this little sleeve is supposed to pop out that holds it in there. And then, uh, yeah, then we can pull it out. So let's see what happens here. Jiggle it like this apparently. Oh, hello B, look at that. Dang. So, I don't know if I pull this out, whether the cog's gonna fall down inside. Yes, it did, but that's probably okay. Put that in our parts tray, and then oh, look at that. Alright, so let's just pop that on that rag there. That should give us clear access to that clutch. So we need to put our clutch removal tool down in here and slip that over the clutch. Now, provided that that old clutch has the right amount of teeth, which I'm still not 100% sure on, but we'll find out in a second, we should be able to then put a breaker bar or even an impact on there. And remember that it's a left-hand thread, so that's going to have to go to the right to loosen it off. Oh, and then we should be able to pull the clutch out. And that'll mean that we're exactly halfway, I would say. Oh no, it was just me making those scratches in the 